Thank you, Reverend Christine Ashu Wadham, for those kind words. You are generous. To the members of the board, the principal, faculty members, graduating students, their families and friends, and to the current students, greetings from Union Presbyterian Seminary. It is indeed an honor to join you to celebrate the gifts, the calling, and the hard work of these friends who are graduating today. I celebrate with you. I celebrate all those who are here to celebrate you. Your teachers, parents, family members, friends, and your peers. We celebrate, and I would say, the angels join us in celebrating your calling to ministry. Your hard work in the last two, three, four years. You deserve this honor. And God is sending you into this messy world today. Welcome to this messy world of ministry. I say that with fear, with awe, and with joy. Welcome. When I say welcome, I also mean that you already have been welcomed into ministry because for the last one year, two year, three year, four year, you've been in ministry, the ministry of learning. You've been studying, studying hard, and you would continue to study. That's your calling. While at the seminary, you have already been in ministry of mediating God's grace to anyone and everyone that you came across. You mediated God's grace in classroom and in the community and on campus, in the cafeteria, in the chapel, in the cricket ground, in the library, wherever you were, there was God's grace and presence. That's what your calling has been in, on the campus. You came because you've been sent. You came to the seminary because God has sent you. Now you go forth because God is sending you. When you go forth, I have bad news. Let me start with bad news. That you are going as like sheep into the midst of wolves. For all my years of teaching, I have taught many and I hope that they would remain like sheep in the midst of wolves. But unfortunately, tragically, some of them have themselves become wolves. Please, do not join that gang. I have also good news. In this weird, cruel, messy ministry, you are, you will never be victims. Because the Spirit joins you in your struggles. I have an exhortation too. While you go out, when you face these humans who are like wolves, never fear any, none but God. In the text that we have read, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10. We heard Jesus sending out the twelve. He had earlier summoned them, gave them authority. Now Jesus sends them, tells them, as you go, proclaim the good news. What's the good news? God's commonwealth is here, is at hand, now and here. So, Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Good luck on that. 
Mennonite uh, Brethren Seminary has not taught you those and does not need to. This is what Jesus has been doing in the earlier chapters, chapter 8 and 9. And Jesus would be doing in chapter 10 onwards until the end of his ministry. Curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers and casting out the demons. And this is what God has been doing. God has been in the business of restoring the world. And what we train you to do is to join God in what God is doing. Bravely, humbly, and faithfully. Jesus tells and Luke reminds, while you do that, do not accumulate. No additional tunics, no additional sandals, no savings. You don't have to charge people. No need of Google Pay. No need of phone pay. Do not charge because you have not paid. You may have paid for the seminary education, but not for the good news. You have received it free. You will be hungry. Depend on people's hospitality, but do not exploit. I think Luke had those traveling uh, uh, preachers of the first century when he was recollecting this passage. And you would see the parallels of it in the ancient document of Didache, dating back to the earlier part of the second century. After giving instructions, Jesus gives them the warning. Jesus warns them that there will be persecution. I send you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Wolves that are worse than the difficulties that you had at the seminary. The people that you faced. Worse than those long, long papers. Trivial senate and college exams. Weekly quizzes and exercises papers. You are getting into the worst part of ministry. Do not be afraid. You will be like sheep in, in the midst of wolves. Wolves in human flesh. Some from outside, some from inside. Governors and governments, presidents and prime ministers. Wolves from within your own community, your own church, your bosses, your denominational heads, colleagues, congregational leaders and members tell you in this world there are more wolves than sheep. They betray you. They betray you to be flogged. But do not be panicky. Who else would understand the treachery of the situation except those to whom Matthew was writing? Betrayed by their own Jewish neighbors and handed over to those Roman rulers. Who else would understand this treachery except those Christians in India betrayed by their own neighbors and Persecuted by the rulers. Matthew was telling them. And Matthew was reminding them that Jesus himself has been betrayed by his own and executed by the Romans. Verses 24 25. Reminds them the disciples are no better than the Master. The same thing Paul in Galatians reminds. Christians in Gal Gal Galatia bragged about their salvation, gloried in their status in Christ, and scalped in their shame and humiliation. Paul reminds them, hey, Christ whom you worship and whom you confess has himself been humiliated, shamed, lynched, paraded by those 
in power you are no better than the christ so be assured be assured that you are not alone that the spirit of christ is with you and the spirit speaks through you so have no fear of them verse 26 verse 28 do not fear those who kill the body so do not be afraid verse 31 fear the one who sent you fear the one who cares for you fear the one who values your gifts your life your calling it is the one that called you whom we should fear none else the greatest of the, greatest of the prophets eliza had those fears his own doubts his own movements we read in the passage from first kings when threatened by Jezebel, eliza was afraid got up fled for his life abandoned his disciples walked for a day into the wilderness hid under a solitary broom tree and wished that he might die it is enough O lord take away my life for i am no better than my ancestors after all this fear he looked at the one that he feared the one that he who sent him? Yahweh. So he gathered courage, went, stood up, and faced King Ahab and warned him. I think that's the reason why in Jewish memory, Eliza never died, although he wished to die. Jews, even today, remember him as the one who would come and join their struggles. On the day of Passover every year, they keep a door open so that he would join them. Friends, as you begin ministries, I charge you not to fear. Jesus has shown how not to fear. Paul has shown us how not to fear. Reformers of the 16th century have shown us how not to fear. Oscar Romero of the 20th century, El Salvador, has shown us how not to fear. Father Stan Swami of India has showed us how not to fear. We do not have to. So I charge you to fear the one and only. I charge you not to fear those who give you parishes and postings, not to fear those who transfer you and suspend you, not to fear those who ordain you and defrock you, not to fear those who flog you and imprison you, not to fear those who cancel your FA, FCRAs and send income tax teams, not to fear those rulers who shame you and willfully ignore you, I charge you not to fear those who assassinate your character and deprive you of your livelihood. Do not fear them. I charge you to fear the one who has called you and who is sending you now and forever. In the name of Jesus, his Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.